Good morning to you all. Uh, we do welcome you to our Sunday service and we thank uh, God is going to help you understand the Word of God, uh, able to listen to the Word of God, able to meditate upon the Word of God. Our Bible readings today are from Matthew chapter 23, verses 1 to 12, 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 9 to 13. Let us pray. Come to our great teacher. Listen to God's word. Sing God's praise and be encouraged in your daily lives. Be strengthened in your call to serve God and all who are in need. We are gathered here today around the word and word. God, your word lives. It breathes, it encourages, it pleads. It urges us towards love and greater love. As we listen to your word today, may we hear the words in our hearts that call us towards love of other, self and stranger. Your word is an invitation towards an ever greater hospitality. And so we stand supported in the living word that always welcomes. Amen. Uh, I'm going to call Brother Ben, to come and read the word of God from Matthew chapter 23, verses 1 to 12. Good morning, everyone. It's uh, great to be here again, and it's a beautiful day today. Uh, it's uh, my, my pleasure to be able to bring the word of God to you, and it's just so good to be able to read the word of God and know that God is here with us and always. So we have two Bible readings today from Matthew 23. Uh, 1 to 12. So then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, The teachers of the law and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. So you must be careful to do everything they tell you, but do not do, uh, but do, not do what they do, for they do not practice what they preach. They tie up heavy, cumbersome loads and put them on other people's shoulders but they themselves are not willing to lift a finger to move them. Everything they do is done for people to see. They make their phylacteries wide and the tassels on their garments long. They love the place of honour at banquets and the most important seats in the synagogue. They love to be greeted with respect in the marketplace and to be called rabbi by others. But you are not to be called rabbi for you have one teacher, and you are not to, and you are all brothers. And do not call anyone on earth father, for you have one father, and he is in heaven. Nor are you to be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Messiah. The greatest among you will be your servant. For those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. The, the second reading today is from 1 Thessalonians 2, 8 to 13. So we cared for you because we loved you so much. We were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God, but our lives as well. Surely you remember, brothers and sisters, our toil and hardship. We work night and day in order not to be a burden to anyone while we preach the gospel of God to you. You are witnesses, and so is God, of how, of, of how holy, righteous and blameless we were among you who believed. For you know that we dealt with each of you as a father deals with his own children, encouraging, comforting and urging you to live lives worthy of God, who calls you into his kingdom and glory. And we also thank God continually because... When you received the word of God, which you heard from us, you accepted it, not as, human, not as a human word, but as it actually is, the word of God, which is indeed at work in you who believe. And this is the amazing word of the Lord. Uh, we'll um, get Johnson back up here to share his message for this week on these two scriptures. Uh, come up, Johnson. Yeah. Thank you so much, Brother Ben. Uh, 
Today I have something to share with you on the theme masks masks let me show you <laughs> mask there are going to be a lot of people running around out here with masks on this week, probably on Saturday. People pretending to be something they are not, or maybe trying something that in part they are or want to be. Maybe you know about Halloween, and that's going to be happening. Masks are interesting things. We wear them, you know, not just on Halloween. We put on them brave smiling masks when our hearts are breaking. We put on a graph mask to keep people at a distance. Sorry. We put on a wild and crazy mask to get attention to avoid responsibility. We put on an expect mask to get respect or to earn a living. Most of us have many masks that we put on. Let me remove this one. Wearing a mask can help protect you and those around you if you are in an area with community transmission and physical distancing is not possible during COVID-19. The main value of wearing a mask is to protect other people. If the person wearing the mask is unknowingly infected, wearing a mask will reduce the chances of them passing the virus on to others. So masks can be a means of survival for us, a way of hiding perhaps in a world that seems hostile. I have heard gay people talk about having to put on a mask or perhaps a whole lion suit to disguise their real identity so that they can be accepted enough to for function in their daily work. Most of us do not have to hide in such an extreme way but all of us hide at least occasionally. Sometimes that is a positive thing. Counselors and pastors, ministers must set aside or mask off their own problems while they are supporting someone else through a crisis. Sometimes masks are not so gentle. The wolf in sheep's clothing is a menace to all who fail to see through the disguise. And we have all had our full of corrupt business and political leaders who hide behind the filibuster or the letter of the law. Most often, however, masks are not just part of a living society. They keep us from overwhelming each other with our undigested lives. As we all know, maybe people say, how are you? And because you are putting on a mask, most people say, I'm fine. Even if they are not fine. Must allow us some privacy. They hide or screen off things that should not momentarily be on our view. Masks can hide, but they can also display. A mask can be a way of exploring another side of ourselves or of bringing something deep within to light. Sometimes when we are on our vacation, we try on a different side of ourselves. The cautions accountant goes skydiving. The shy child goes to camp and starts throwing cabin mats with tall tails, and the white collar worker tries a life at a dude range, while the busy life of the party person takes a silent retreat. For some people, getting drunk may be a kind of putting a party mask, giving them the freedom to try on a different approach to social relations. So, in that case, the alcoholic mask tries both to hide shyness and to bring out a more daring and connected personality. Masks can conceal or they can reveal. Often, they do a bit of both at once. What masks do, do you wear day to day when you are moving? What masks do you wear here at church? When you are home, you are someone different. When you are at church, you are someone different. 
Are there signs of yourself that you feel you can't show here? Are there signs of yourself that you feel you can't show anyone? What do you hide behind? And when and why? What facets of yourself are you masking off from view? What masks do you have and why do you wear them? Do you know what hypocrites are? Originally, the word was a term from the ancient Greek theater. An actor would appear on a stage wearing a large grinning mask and would quote humorous lines causing the audience to laugh. The actor would disappear backstage, put on a frowning mask and then reappear, quoting sombre lines that would cause the audience to sigh and mourn. That actor with these two faces was called a hypocrite. Hippo hypocritus, one who wears a mask. Therefore, hypocrites are people who put on a false face. They pretend to be something they are not. They are people whose deeds don't match their words, whose conduct is inconsistent with their creed, and whose actions are out of step with their alleged beliefs. So when Jesus watched some of the Pharisees in action, they reminded him of the masked actors at the Roman theaters in the big town of Caesarea. So that's what he called them, hypocriti, hypocrites, as we say it in English. So the word actually means masked actors. Jesus says the Pharisees are like actors wearing their masks. They are playing a role. They are hiding as much as they show. They are not the real thing. Now, what are they acting out? The things they represent are valuable and important. Jesus is the first to acknowledge that. These religious leaders, he says, are the heirs of Moses, fulfilling that great teacher's role of interpreting God to the people. Listen to them. What they are teaching is correct. But it should go more than mask deep. It is just a mask. Something wrong. So you need to remove the mask. It's good to get that off. Remove the mask. You know, if we just put on our religion or any other aspect of our personality, if we just mask off piety or propriety or vitality or anything else, it should soon become evident to others, if not to ourselves. So people are eventually see that we are actors portraying a wonderful and valuable thing Perhaps, but if at its root we are unchanged by it, then we become hypocrites who hide as much as we reveal. So when the first we present to life is just a mask, it narrows our vision and stifles our breathing, and it keeps others from seeing and knowing us as we are. So it's a relief to us and to others when we take it off. Do you ever think that people might like you better without the mask? Now that's scary thought. We are often afraid to put our real selves on display because if people reject a mask that we wear, they are not really rejecting us, but if we don't wear a mask and we get rejected, then that hurts. So often we put the mask on, and on in advance. Sometimes you know that you don't want to talk to the person. So you put the mask in advance, which says, don't talk to me. And we don't give people a chance to reject the real thing. But people can see that mask for what it is. They sense it's not quite the real thing. And they, and they suspect that you can't really be trusted. So the tragedy is that by then, we often don't know how to get the mask off. So we may keep the mask through and through. It's not that our masks are necessarily bad. They may show and tell valuable things. And he helped us to fill important roles, as Jesus remarked about the Pharisees. But if what we present is only a mask, it's completely inadequate. And in some ways, it's a lie. For it does not define us in our deepest and truest sense. Because sometimes people smile. They give a fake smile when deep down they are not smiling. It is so easy to start out just by putting on a mask to cover up a bit of momentary untidiness. 
But then as we get busy or as we get to liking the ways people respond to their mask, we begin to let more and more distance creep between the mask and the reality. Until we don't know how to pull them back together. Maybe we even lose track of the fact that we are wearing a mask. And the day comes when the face looks great, but the reality behind it is full of holes. And we are nothing more than a hypocrite. An actor, emptiness behind a mask. That so often happens in the church. We see what wonderful things God calls to us to do. And we try to live to them, but we don't always manage it. And it becomes tempting to whitewash a little. You know fake it is till you make it. Dress the part until you grow into it. Put on the mask to help you get into the act. It is, after all, how we grow into things. By trying them on, by acting as if. There can be such a fine line between a mask that draws something out in us and a mask that conceals what we are ashamed to own. Sometimes we put that mask on because of the intolerance of others. If we can't be good, we at least try to look good because it saves a lot of friction. I think that for leaders, this is a special edge. We want to believe in those high ideals. So we preach them and we do what we can to model them outwardly at least. Sometimes it just gets too painful to ask about what's going on in one and the mask it off. Maybe even from ourselves until we are nothing more than a hypocrite, an actor, an emptiness behind a mask. So Paul in his letter to the church at Thessalonica demonstrates that it doesn't have to be that way. The face he presented there to the Thessalonians congregation was born deep. The whole of his life and relationship reflected that was in his heart in 1 Thessalonians chapter, 9 and, uh, chapter 2, verse 9 and 10. We dare to live in that kind of intimacy and transparency with his congregation that allowed them to see who he really was and all the way through. So the thing is, though that was eventually happens whether we intended it or not, sooner or later, our real character becomes apparent. Mask or no mask. Just as we can recognize our close friends even in costume, or our own children in hockey gear. We can recognize and point that that is John, that is Joey, that is Peter. We recognize the whole build and the man of moving and are not fooled by the mask. So Jesus was not full, fooled by the Pharisees. And Paul knew that the congregation in Thessalonica would soon, sooner or later, see to the core of him. I wasn't wearing any mask. He says, Rather, in a way, I became a mask, a mask for God, a face for the invisible God, to present visibly to the world. So Paul's life became a way of showing not only the truth of what was Paul in, but the deeper truth of what was beyond Paul, beneath and sustaining Paul, the reality of Paul's God. So the apostle says, I was like a father with his children. Aging and encouraging you into the life of God's realm. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 11, 12. So God's only fatherly care of him showed through into Paul's fatherly care of, of this new congregation. Enabling them, as he says, to receive the message he brought as God's own word. And not man as human story. So the Thessalonians saw not a masked actor evangelist but the very light of God shining through the wall of Paul's speech and living. They were able to see God through Paul. And that is what he was saying. We are called and invited in such transformation. Not a transformation to cover ourselves up with this or that or the other mask. But to dare to remove our masks. To expose our deepest selves to the presence of God and the needs of our neighbors. And so to become holy personal masks of God in this world. Showing and telling through the nonsense of our daily living what God is about in the world. So, we are the one gospel our neighbors are guaranteed to read. If our neighbors don't have Bibles, 
They should look at us and see and read a Bible ready to be read. They should see at us and see Christ's like life in us, which we portray. So we are the image of Jesus Christ. So we don't need to put all these other masks which we try to get so that people believe what we are not. So I am urging you, brothers and sisters, to take your responsibility and remove the mask off and be the person God has called you to be. Be the person Jesus Christ has called you to be so that you can be the light of the world, so that you can be the salt of the world because people start to see the light in you. Do not change who you are. Even wherever you go, even when nobody's looking, when nobody's watching, remain a Christian. Even when you are on your own, remain a Christian. And that is what I am calling you to be. May the good Lord bless you from now and evermore. Amen. Let us pray. God of justice, justice is your name. We who call ourselves yours have often led justice at the door, preferring ones to action. Oh God, we have done wrong. May we pick up justice and hold it in our hands as we turn back to you. Support us, oh God, in our justice and in our turning towards justice. Be with us, Father. Forgive us, loving God, when we trumpet our good deeds and show off to impress others, when we sacrifice integrity for popularity, when we seek attention more than we seek you, give us a quiet confidence that has no need to boast, that puts integrity before success, so that we may be people of depth and honesty to your glory. Amen. Let us pray for the offering. Father, we bring your offering today as we pray, knowing that you are God and that nothing is impossible with you. We bring this offering, Father, so that you can bless it, so that everyone would know that you are God. Bless this offering, Father, for the expansion of your kingdom. Bless everyone, those who are taking part in this offering as well. Not forgetting those who do not have. Thank you, Father. In your name I pray. Amen. We are going to have our Holy Communion. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. All who come to me shall not hunger, and all who believe in me shall not thirst. With Christians around the world and throughout the centuries, we gather in this uncertain and familiar time, in homes, hospital beds, workplaces around these familiar symbols, symbols of ordinary elements that speak of nourishment and hope, and are freely given for all of God's people. The peace of the Lord be with all of you. Loving God, we thank you that you are as close to us as breath, that you love constant and unfailing. You put the stars in the sky and know the number of grains of sand on the beach. We thank you for all you have created that sustains us. We thank you for Jesus Christ who taught us how to live Lives of forgiveness and peace, hope and grace through the life, death and resurrection. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit, our comforter who knows of every need, even before we ask. As we remember, as a reminder of how you have nourished and strengthened your people throughout all generations and all places. Through this meal, we celebrate that you have called us to be the body of Christ. Hands, feet, ears. And mom, wherever we are and in whatever capacity we have, that we may join with you in the reconciliation of all creation. And now in the silence, we remember all who are broken, all who are struggling with ill health, job loss, tired, anxiety, fear from the impact of COVID-19. All who are oppressed, 
We remember those who are alone and cast aside, all who are hopeless and despairing, all who are afraid to stand up and speak out and face ridicule and condemnation. For it is these very ones whom Christ invites to this meal of hope. So in the tradition of our story of faith, we pray together in prayer that Christ taught us. Our Father in heaven, our Lord be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We remember on the night when Jesus and the disciples had their last meal together. Jesus took the bread, gave thanks, and gave it to the disciples saying, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take and eat as often as you do. Remember me. In the symbol of the broken bread, we participate in the life of Christ and dedicate ourselves to be his disciples, finding in our midst of the brokenness and woundedness of life. In the same way, he took the cup and after giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Drink this, all of you. This cup is the new covenant poured out for you and for many. Do this as often as you drink it in the remembrance of me. In the symbol of wine poured out, we participate in the life of Christ and dedicate ourselves to be his disciples, giving ourselves to others so they can come to know there's always hope to be found. There are the gifts. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Let's eat and drink together. I now urge you to bring the bread and the wine. Let us take it together. Of blood of Christ shed for me. We give thanks, loving God, that you have refreshed us at your table. Strengthen our faith in this challenging time. Increase our love for one another. Open our eyes to see where you are at work around us. And may we continue to live all the hope we have in, with, within us, with those who are in need of hope, today and in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, I, I know today again is Holy Communion Sunday. I would urge you to do the Benevolent Fund as well, which is supporting for those who are disadvantaged as we will be taking our offering. Don't forget to do that. God bless you. Amen. Let us receive grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all from now and evermore. Amen.